uh, is to write it for yourself and shove it in a drawer. Never show it to anyone. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that, but that is an option. There are a lot of books that are sitting in drawers somewhere. I'll give you a really good example. The Girl with a with the Dragon Tattoo. You guys remember that book that sold like 20 million copies? It's a detective fiction, right? Do you know that it was a Swedish, pretty sure it's Swedish. Might be Norwegian. I'm pretty sure it's Swedish though. Uh, he was a journalist. He wrote that book and then like the other three in the series. He wrote those uh, himself, thought that they sucked and put them in a drawer. Died. His family found them, thought they were pretty good, got them to a book agent, sold tens of millions of copies. Right? So don't, there, are, there is a long, uh, and uh, I'll give you another example. For, uh, 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 Kafka, like one of the, uh, Franz Kafka, one of the most famous writers in world history, uh, wrote, never published anything, told his executor to burn all his papers. Thank God he didn't. Emily Dickinson never published anything, shoved it all in a drawer. I go down the list. There is a long history of brilliance and shoving it in a drawer. I'm not saying to do that, but I'm saying that is an option. Second option, you can finish it and print less than 10 copies. Right? Like the way printing and publishing works now, it's really easy to do print on demand and print like 10 copies. And then you have your three and then you give each seven people one and that's it. No electronic copies that you know exactly who has a copy and no one else sees it, totally possible. Or an extension of that is you can print a bunch more copies, like maybe 50 or 100. You want everyone in your family to see it, but you don't want the world to see it, right? Totally possible, very easy to do. Or of course, there's option four. You publish it, release it to the world, send it out like all these books. It's like a real book, right? So now <clears throat> you don't need to decide what you're gonna do right now. And in fact, I'm gonna make a recommendation to you that might seem a little weird, but I think you'll probably get it once I explain. I think you should pick option one, but just for now, not permanently, right? Because by choosing option one for now, you, uh, uh, we, option one is where you write it for yourself, you know, you shove it into a drawer, you don't show it to anyone. It allows you to write as if no one's ever going to read it, right? And why, so you're letting go of every fear that comes from writing a memoir. So let's actually go through all the fears. I tell you that because we hear them all the time. Every single fear, I think, from writing a memoir is covered on here. Wait till I'm done. If you can think of one that's not on here, I'll be impressed. The big one is family issues. Oh, God, what if my family reads this? What will they say? What will they think, et cetera? It doesn't matter. They're not going to read it, at least the first draft, right? Doesn't matter. Or legal issues. Will I get sued for saying this? Now, make no mistake, publishing a memoir can create real legal issues. Ask me how I know. I've been sued three fucking times, right? I won all three cases, thank God, because in America, truth is still a defense to libel. Uh, and I always told the truth. But still, going through uh, legal issues sucks, man. I had my first deposition like six months ago, four months ago. It wasn't as bad as I thought. But it's still unfun. Right? Third, facts versus truth. A lot of people get obsessed with, oh, is what I'm writing factually correct? It doesn't, doesn't matter right now. You can worry about facts later. If you're writing it for yourself, all that matters is getting your truth down. Fourth one is memory. Am I remembering this correctly? Is this how it actually happened? I get it. But all that matters right now is your memory of your experiences, not what actually happened. And by the way, unless you're God, uh, like we were talking about earlier, and not the dude in Tucson, unless you're actual God, uh, you, you don't have, no one has a, um, <clears throat> no one has a perfect memory. I wouldn't sweat this too much, but I can understand stressing Fifth uh, uh, fear is publishing. How do I get a publishing deal? Not important. Not worried about it right now. You'll deal with that later. Six is audience. Who's going to read this? For this version, no one's going to read it except you. That's it. So it's like, oh, shit, all the pressure is gone. I'm the only one who's going to read it. Marketing and sales. Who's going to buy it? How do I sell copies? Wait, do I need a website? What about Facebook? Stop it. Let all that shit go. You're not going to need any of it. For right now, this is only about putting your truth out. Or writing. I don't feel like I'm good enough at writing. Who cares? Doesn't matter. The only point is to write your truth. You're the only one who's going to read it. Judgment. What if my book sucks and people judge me? <laughs> I mean, God knows. 
you're going to get judged if you write a book. Even if it's almost all good, it's still judgment, right? Doesn't matter. Uh, they can't actually, they can't judge you. You're, if you're writing for only you and, and, and never showing it to anyone, you can't be judged for now. Right? Selfishness. This is a big one we get. Is it selfish to write about my life? A lot of people think this, right? I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, writing your truth is a form of self-care. Right. I, I, I don't I'm absolute believer that if you don't care about your own life, who will? Right. I, this is not the only people who call self-care selfish are narcissists uh, and sociopaths trying to control you. Fuck those people. That's why I'm going to tell you to write as if no one will ever read it. Then you can change your mind after you're done. Right. Does this make sense. Now, now look, I, I, I'll tell you. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you this too. We're going to talk about this in editing as well. The advice for memoir is write for yourself, edit for your reader. You can write for yourself without ever having to worry about anything else. And then when you're done writing for yourself, you are going to be a different person. You will have a whole new perspective on your life. A lot of things you're worried about now will either become obvious, like, yeah, that's a big deal. I need to not talk about that. Or you'll realize it's not a fear at all or something else. A lot of unanswered questions in your head will become answered. And then you can make a publishing decision from a position of information as opposed to ambiguity. Does that make sense? All right, cool. Let's take questions right now because I know this is a big, uh, this is a big issue. So let's go ahead and, and, and dive in. If you're going to ask questions, uh, you can, uh, yeah, you, Emily, you got the Q&A, right? Please put mm -hmm. them all in Q&A. And then Emily will, because uh, I'm a delicate genius. I can't see bad questions. I just freak out. <laughs> I'm kidding. He really does freak out at the list of questions. <laughs> I have to feed them to him. Sometimes. It's true. <laughs> um, while we wait for folks to submit questions in the Q&A, I did think of one fear that is not assuaged by uh, writing your book only for yourself, which is encountering emotions that I don't think I want to feel as I write. Fuck, you're totally right. God damn it. Um, and I will say yes. the antidote to that in my experience is when you really commit to writing your book in the way that you need it, when you commit to writing your book as a practice that serves you, you actually end up figuring out ways to navigate those emotions that are healthy and helpful. They don't feel great, but <laughs> um, but my my uh, my the way I've developed is that I've realized that that is like the practice of writing memoir. Yeah, no, that's that's a really phenomenal point. <laughs> The only thing I would add to that is um, it's not, it's easy. Yeah, no, I, actually, I don't have anything to add. You're right. I think it's really good. I think you covered it. All right, questions. So uh, the first one, a lot of these are actually not to what we just covered. So if you have questions to what we just covered, please post them. I'll make sure to zero in on those first. Right. This but is not do... an open Q&A. If yeah. your question is, how do I edit my book? We're going to get to that in the editing section. Yeah. yeah. Um, are we going to later cover legal concerns? No, I'm not going to cover any of that. Uh, so there's a couple reasons. One is that this is a workshop on how to write your memoir. This is not a workshop on how to publish your, or how to decide to publish your memoir. Uh, that is a totally different set of concerns. It covers all the things I, I just covered, but it's not the same ideas and it's not the same thing. And I'll be honest, uh, this is my perspective and I could be wrong. I don't think you should worry about whether you're publishing or not until you've written because until you've written it, you're just fucking bullshitting yourself. And you will just look to find an excuse to not write it. And so like, we're gonna do a workshop on making your publishing decision for a memoir. And I'm honestly not sure if we're gonna make it public or not. Probably we will, but I, the way I wanna do, we're not gonna charge for it. We don't charge for information, Scribe. We only charge for services and our time. 
Um, but uh, probably what we'll do is we'll gate it in a way where you have to like prove you've written your memoir. Uh, we don't even have to look at it. Like I'm not saying we read it because we don't read everyone's memoir unless you're paying us to. We're not reading your memoir. But um, uh, because I don't want it to be an obstacle to people. Like, cause you, the option to put this in a drawer or even delete it uh, is always there. And um, I'm a big believer that writing a memoir, which is probably, probably no, I had the benefits of uh, why write a book. Um, like if you wanna know why to write a memoir, go look at the, on the YouTube channel, the Scribe Book School YouTube channel, the video, why uh, should you write a book? And I really detail why it matters to write a memoir. And the, the big thing I say is because your pain could be someone else's map and because it's the only way, it's the best way I know how to really understand yourself. It's not the only way, it's one of the best ways. And so uh, even if you decide not to publish it, even if your pain can't be someone else's map because you decide not to publish it, you still get an immense amount out of it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, this is like one of those things where it's like, if someone's learning how to be a mechanic you don't teach them, you know, like uh, the rules for NASCAR off the jump. You got to teach them what's a crankshaft or what's, you know, a cylinder. You got to start with the basics. And so we're starting with the basics. So we have a few questions about the fear around writing about other people in your memoir. Can you speak to how do you write about loved ones when you're worried? You know, obviously, we said if you write just for yourself, it covers this, but dive a little deeper into how do you write about people that you love in your life? I mean, okay. So the, I believe the next section is truth. So we're going to cover the sum in truth. Uh, uh, speaking truth in your memoir. Actually, l let's wait for that, Emily, because I think we're going to cover that there. But I, I will tell you, do not make a mistake about this. Writing, writing a nonfiction book, what we taught last week, is pretty simple. Writing a memoir is dead ass simple. I could make this a 30 minute instruction. Seriously. And you wouldn't get all the info, but like if, if you just needed to know exactly what to do, I could put it on one sheet. You'll see the memoir algorithm. We're going to do it two sections from now. So like in 30 minutes or 60 minutes, it's couldn't be more simple. The what you need to know to write a memoir is very simple. The, now it is extremely hard to implement it because of all the emotions and the stuff that comes up. Right, that's extremely difficult. But do not confuse the two things. Do not try and make this complicated. It is not complicated. If you're trying to make it complicated, it's a way of avoiding your emotions. That is what is going on. So every question you have about how do I write about my family is fucking answered right now. You're not writing it for them. You're not going to show this draft to them. So sit down and write it. You're going to show it if you show it to them, which is a big concern. And I'm not saying you'll make that decision later. You will edit it with that. You'll decide uh, uh, what you want to do. And then you'll edit it with that in mind. So don't worry about it right now. It is an obstacle that it's like worried about crossing a bridge you're not at yet. And I know from writing my own memoir that there were certain things I initially didn't want to let myself write because I, like every good girl raised in America, like I had this fear around speaking ill of other people. And it was only after I let go of that and let myself write about what I truly thought and felt when I saw behavior from other people um, and let myself dive into the emotions of that that I realized that there were lessons that I learned that I could totally wipe the circumstances, like I could wipe the circumstances of it away. I could decide not to tell other people the story of how I learned that thing, but that learning could come through so much more clearly. And I wouldn't have gotten there if I didn't let myself write the version that I definitely didn't want anyone else to see. Yep, exactly, totally. So, so this, I'm telling you, it's dead simple. Just assume no one's ever going to see this for this draft. And by the way, no one will ever see this draft because you'll probably edit it at least once before you show it to anybody. So you're writing for yourself right now and you're making your decision. Even if you know, you know for a fact you're going to publish it, which is cool. 
it, it's just a simple mental trick. I am I am writing this draft as if no one will ever see it, so that I can feel completely free to say anything I want uh, 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 in any way I want. That's it. This is an interesting question from Lobat. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. Can a memoir be written in third person? Oh, I knew that uh, one would make you laugh. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> we're we're not laughing, by the way, because it's a dumb question. We're laughing because uh, at least no, I yeah, dumb's not the right. It is. A, it, I think I see all. I've seen all the ways the mental gymnastics people will go through to avoid emotions, and then it's like you're like, oh wow, I've never seen that twist before. <laughs> No, uh -huh. I, shockingly, no one has ever asked me if they could write their memoir in third person. Maybe, okay, I'll tell you what. If you're Prince fucking William, you can. If you're fucking royalty and you speak about yourself in the third person, like a fucking king, uh, <laughs> then you go ahead. But no, you can't write your memoir. Think about this. Imagine whoever, anyone. Imagine I met you at the grocery store and I'm like, <laughs> you know, Tucker's kind of hungry. And you're like, oh, really? Well, why doesn't he eat? Uh, Tucker, Tucker hasn't seen anything he wants to eat. And then we just had this long conversation about Tucker's emotions. And it took you five minutes to realize I'm Tucker. You, <laughs> you would rightfully think that I was so fucked up in so many ways. Uh, there's like there's a Seinfeld episode about this. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy's feeling good today. Like he keeps talking about himself in the third person. No, you cannot talk about yourself in the third person. When royalty does it, we laugh at them. If you're English, if you're the dude from the UK, go ahead, fine. But here in America, we don't have kings and queens. No, you can't. Well, and just to reiterate, third person is a way to distance yourself, right? You don't have as much access to talking about the internal experience if you're writing about it from third person. Yep. All right. Um, a lot of the questions that are on this list, those of you who have submitted questions, there are a lot on this list. Many of them we're going to cover throughout the webinar later. So I'm going to leave them for now. And if they don't get answered, I'll bring them back up. All right. We're ready for the next section. All right, let's see. All right, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to go into truth, to speaking, to talk about truth in memoir. <clears throat> because one, now let's say you've made your decision. Okay, I'm going to write it and I'm, I'm going to write it as if no one will ever read it. And then either make or solidify my decision later, which really solves all those emotional problems for now. They're not solved. They're pushed off, I should say. They're not solved. Now, then it comes time to sit down to write. And if you're going to be writing a memoir, the reason to do it is to write your truth. Seriously, if you want to sit down to write lies, uh, and I don't mean lies in a propaganda sense. If you want to lie to yourself, there's no reason to do this. It's a waste of time, right? But let's talk about that for a second. Why does it matter to write, uh, to uncover and write your truth? Why is the truth even important? So everyone knows the saying, right? The truth will set you free. But what's that mean? Well, I mean, on a biological level, I can tell you the truth equals life, right? Truth is the key to survival. And I just mean like, if you don't, if you can't see your environment accurately, you can't see predators or you can't find food. If you don't hear things properly. So I mean like fidelity in terms of truth. Like how well are your perceptions lining up with external reality, all right? But it goes way deeper. There's a, so there's a deep biological reason uh, why truth matters to beings, right? Not necessarily philosophical truth, but truth in terms of, like I said, environmental reality. But it goes way deeper than that. One of our most vital tasks in life, I believe, is telling the true story of our own lives, right? Which means uncovering and speaking your truth, uh, <clears throat> which allows you to fully examine. There's no way to fully examine your life without uncovering and speaking your truth, right? All the facts of your life. That's what I think. And once you fully examined it and felt it, you can then rewrite your story. And I don't mean the events are facts. What happened is happened, right? But what you can uh, rewrite the meaning. So you don't get to choose your facts. 
I had the mom I had, I had the dad I had, I grew up the places I grew up, all that sort of stuff. But I do get to decide what my past means to me, right? This is real freedom, is the ability to freely look at the facts of your life and then freely decide what they mean. Alice Miller, very famous psychologist, said, we become free by transforming ourselves from unaware victims of the past into responsible individuals in the present who are aware of our past and are thus able to live with it. Right? Does that make sense? Because if you want, most people who want to write memoirs, whether they admit it to themselves or not, they're doing it to heal, which I get. It makes sense. I've written (laughs) written four, five, right? One was mine and one was uh, Tiffany's. I, I've written and then a couple others that I haven't publicly talked about. I get it. The point is to heal. But the only way to heal is to choose truth. You cannot heal through lies. There is no way to do that. Right? Does this resonate? Do you guys, are you guys getting this? So let's talk for a second about what it means to uncover your truth. To uncover your truth is about recognizing and admitting to yourself what your truth is really is. I don't believe you find your truth. Right? I believe it's already there in you. Thus, we say uncover, not find. To say find means that it's external, that uh, someone else could tell you where it is. I don't think so. I think every single one of us have to uncover our own truth. Right? So let's talk for a second about what's not uncovering your truth. And this is going to answer some of the stuff that Emily was talking about earlier with the family. Payback or vengeance is not uncovering your truth. Right? That's, that is... Uh, um, a way to, if you want vengeance on someone, it is you're trying to alleviate your pain by inflicting pain on them, which it works for a little while, but it doesn't work long term. Wallowing or victimization is not uncovering your truth. And I'm not saying uh, that something bad didn't happen to you. you. You could have had all kinds of horrific stuff happen to you. But if you sit in a victim mindset, the mindset is things happen to me. I don't choose them, right? I don't get to choose my life. Now, you don't get to choose everything that happens to you, of course. But like I said, you do get to choose what it means and how you use it. A victim mindset is crippling, especially in writing a memoir or projecting your emotions on others. That's not uncovering your truth. Right. If I feel um, if I feel upset and I pick a fight with my wife and, and ask her why she's upset, that's me projecting my stuff onto her. Right? So let me give you some examples to, to flesh this out. I'm going to speak my truth. That's yours. So if I speak my truth, that's mine. I'm going to tell my family's awful lie. That is not yours. Now, you can be talking about the same event. So let's just take um, let's take a, a, a really extreme, terrible example. So let's say that um, this did not happen to me. I'm, I'm thinking about something a friend of mine. Um, in fact, hold on. She just finished this book. So this book it comes out, I believe, in two weeks not out yet but it's done this book is called the bad one by aaron tyler it's actually not even on amazon yet she's not going to do pre-sales it's not how do you have a copy send me one because they came to the office Uh, okay i need to get someone to mail me one this book is incredible you all yeah it's amazing and so uh uh aaron um aaron was sexually assaulted by a family member and one another family member okay it's all it's in the book Another family member uh, came in and saw it and then told Aaron, basically, just get over it and lied about it, right? So Aaron could have approached her book two ways. She could have raged at her family, and God knows, I'm with her, right? Like, who could blame her for that? And the book could have been, I'm going to unveil their, their lies and their deceit and their awfulness. All of that's true. And her first draft, her first several drafts were like that. But then what she came to realize is that she can tell the same story, but say, this is uh, my truth, is that this happened to me. This other person did this. Here's how I reacted. 
So she's she writing about the same events and speaking honestly about them both times. But one energetic uh, push was anger towards them. And the other energetic uh, 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 orientation was this is what happened to me and this is how i what i what, what how i felt about it and this is now how i see it you see you understand the difference and, and she wrote the facts are the same in, in both drafts right does this make sense all right so the, another way to say this is that bearing witness is different than wallowing or venting aaron bared witness to what happened but she did not sit in it she did not um or vent about it at least not in this book she did in her early drafts, <laughs> but she, you know, she, it, it takes a while. Like a lot of times it, a good memoir, if you're working through hard stuff, you might write five drafts. Uh, it's just the way it works. And the point, see, but the point is Aaron told her story, not anyone else's. So a good example is in her early drafts, she talked about, well, my mom must've felt this. And because she did this, she's this. She's talking about her mom there. Right? She doesn't know what her mom thought. She doesn't know what her mom felt. She does know what her mom did. Let's just say her mom, for example. She knows what her mom did. She knows what her mom didn't do. She knows what her mom said. Right? She knows what she felt. And so she, uh, the book was a lot of um, projection onto other people and a lot of wallowing and venting early. And then she saw that as she kind of did her emotional work and she really stripped all that out. And now it's what she felt and how she saw it and the things that happened. And so even though like all of the really horrific facts are all still in there, the way she approaches it is not vengeful towards other people. It is just about uncovering and speaking her own truth. And in fact, what's crazy is it makes it 10 times more powerful. All right, so this means for a lot of people that the story you've told yourself is often gonna change as you write your memoir. Right. And this means a lot of times dropping your story and stepping into your truth. I, I, every memoir I have ever written, even the jokey, entertaining ones, I learned quite a bit about myself as I wrote them. And I learned, oh, wow, I was bullshitting myself here. This wasn't quite true. You learn a lot. Right. Or, or you can learn other things. Wow. This person was really kind of awful to me. And I had never even seen it until I started writing about it. Many of those things. happen, Right. So I would advise you to be willing to let go of your story as you write so that you you can uncover your truth, whatever that is. And by the way, the truth has a, a lot of layers. So it's not like your first draft, you just get it all, right? That's why I said sometimes it takes multiple drafts, multiple rounds. Um, these things can take time, right? Alan Watts, a famous philosopher, said waking up to who you are requires letting go of who you imagine yourself to be. That is what's going to happen in your memoir process. Even if, even if you know your truth, let's say you know it, you've got it pretty, you've done a lot of therapeutic work, you got it, writing it down is still going to at least clarify all the core truths you already have. For some of you, a lot of stuff that you didn't know will come up. Others of you, it'll just clarify what you knew. But it's this, it's the same journey and the same process. Also, telling people what to do is never your truth, right? That's a way to keep distance from your truth. So a book that says, here's what you need to do, that can be a valuable book. It's not your truth. If you want to write a book like that, that's the knowledge share nonfiction, you go take that other course. And those, are, those can be fantastic books, right? But it's not your specific truth. It's just a set of instructions teaching someone how to do something. Okay, here's what I did. That's your truth. Telling people, talking about what you did and what you felt and what you learned and what you thought, that's your truth. And things that happened to you, of course, all your truth. So what if a truth comes up that feels really big and intense, too much to handle or whatever? We recommend that you push yourself to the edge, but not over Okay. Don't force yourself to uncover or speak a truth that you've done no work around. Um, the best thing I think you can do is name it and move on. You can always come back to it, right? Uh, and I'll be honest, for a lot of you, like, like, let me get to that. I'm going to get to that in a second. Hold on. 
Um, you can always write another book. You can always add to this book. Uh, most great memoirists write several memoirs. Right? I mean, I've written four and I've got at least another one coming. But the point is to speak from your scars, not your wounds, right? The, uh, speaking from your scars is talking about, she's speaking from her scars. She's dealt with what happened and it's not an open wound anymore. When she first wrote this, she was speaking from her wounds because she hadn't processed it, which is, by the way, a lot of times the process. The first draft or the first couple drafts are how you figure out where the wounds are. And then uh, you heal them. You do the work of healing them. And then you can write about them from scars. So uh, if this is, I'm going to get to that in a second. Hold on. Before we get to questions, I want to talk about uh, memoir as therapy. So uh, because this is, this is the question we never get, but we always should. And so I've got to address that ahead of time. Most of the people who are writing a memoir, not all, but most, are doing it because they either explicitly or implicitly want to use it as a therapeutic process. I'm going to tell you right now, I think that's a fantastic idea under a few conditions. First off, the more that you recognize to yourself that writing your memoir is a therapeutic process for you, the better, right? Cause the, when it, the times it doesn't work is if you come in and you're like, no, no, it's not therapy. I just have a lot to say and people want to hear it. And it's about everybody else. It's not about me. Those, we get plenty of those clients at Scribe and their books are not very good because they never really want to go deep and they never really want to tell the truth. They think they, they came in thinking it's not therapy when really it was, and then they just don't do the work. Okay, you can, you can take that path. But we've had a lot of other clients who come in, regardless of what they're thinking at the beginning, and they go start going through the process of a memoir specifically, and they realize it is a therapeutic process, and then they really go all in. And they really work to uncover their truth the best they can, and to really kind of go into those wounds so that they can help heal them and turn them into scars. Those books tend to be really good, right? And so if you are writing a memoir, and I'm not saying it's like uh, the only way of it, but if you're writing it as part of your therapeutic process or for therapy, and I mean therapy in the broadest sense, that's a good thing. And you don't need to be ashamed about that. In fact, you should be proud of yourself about that. Because unlike most people, you're trying to solve your problems. There's a lot of shit going on in the world right now. Most of it's not so good. Uh, I'm a big believer that you can't change the world, but you can change yourself. And by changing yourself, you can start to change the world, at least around you, right? And that's, I'll tell you straight, I'm a great example of that. Look at my life 10 years ago. Look at my life. Now. I changed myself and the world around me changed. And you're here learning about this now only because of the work I started doing 10 years ago. And then you can do the same thing. You know, other people help me get here. I'm going to help you get to where you're going. You're going to help other people. That's the way it works. Okay. But the more that you recognize your memoir is a way of doing therapy, the better uh, the memoir will be and the more it will help you. You'll, be, you'll feel more free to be honest. You'll feel more free to speak your truth, especially knowing that, that this first draft is for you. And you'll feel more free to really uncover Everything you need to uncover, whatever that is. Okay. All right. Excellent. Emily, let's go to questions. Uh, we've got some great questions on this section. So the first one is a simple question. Hard to answer, I think. Um, more clarification on what's the difference between a, a wound versus a scar and how do you know? Okay. Emotionally, obviously, we're talking about a wound versus a scar, because if you don't know the difference, <laughs> like, like physically, <laughs> there's not like a, a lot I can help you. So well, um, memoirs don't cut you. So I, <laughs> right. I think that's uh, obvious. So, no, it is a good question. You ever seen a speaker, and I mean a speaker in any sense, whether it's on stage or in a webinar or anything, start talking about something where you can tell it's still raw. And what they do is they dump their emotions on you right? Like a wound. A wound bleeds on you. So what someone is doing when they're speaking from a wound is they have a lot of unprocessed emotion and they are dumping it onto you 
uh, as a way of relieving themselves. Of it. All right. So like, uh, which doesn't necessarily mean crying or being sad. It means like, um, I'm trying to think of a really good example. I mean, I know a thousand examples, but ones that people would know. Um, it just anytime, like a, think of any talk show you've ever seen. Someone starts to get hysterical and they start to go this and that and all over the place. And, you know, what they're saying or it's like, then it's like, okay, it's not, it's not that the emotion is bad. It's just that when someone's trying to dump it on you, then um, that's theirs. It's not yours to deal with, right? But speaking from a scar is different. Speaking from a scar is you are sharing what you've learned as you overcame and healed your wounds so that other people can take that and learn from it. Here, I'll give you a really good example. This is not a great emotional example, but it's one that'll really resonate. Imagine if I was at the same stage you are, I don't mean you, Emily, but like the, the viewers, if I was at the same stage you are writing a memoir, if I didn't really know how to do it, and I was here and like, just like, well, I think I do this and I read this and, and then here's what I think and then this, and that would be speaking from wounds, right? Whereas right now I'm speaking from scars because I have written many, many memoirs and taught many, many people how to write memoirs. So I know exactly how to do it. And in fact, writing a memoir was a wound for me at one point because I didn't know how to do this. I had to learn. I had to do it all myself and learn. Right? And so um, that's kind of an example. Not the best example, but it's, it's enough where you get the difference. If you haven't processed it and dealt with it, at least to some level, then writing about it can help you process it. Absolutely. So feel free to write uh, uh, about your wounds. And to write from wounds. Um, but once it goes to someone else, by that time, you're going to probably want it to be uh, coming from scar places of scars, not wounds. Scar healed wounds, which are scars. And I would add, sometimes in writing, you think you're writing about a scar and you realize later it's a wound. <laughs> Uh, like that happens a lot and there's nothing wrong with that. There's also nothing wrong with writing through the wounds and then using that as a process to get them to scars. It's just that that's kind of all the pre-development work of a memoir and the memoir itself is writing from that place that's a little further beyond the processing. Yep, great. Um, another question, a really good one. Does a memoir have to necessarily come from a painful experience for it no. to be considered worth reading? Absolutely not. Not in any None way, shape, or form. Yours didn't. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, mine were well, sort of. Oh, I mean, they did, but you didn't write about. No, but uh, see, I don't know if you. I don't know if you've read them. It's, it, not it's, all of them. A lot of people have a lot of opinions about my writing. Most of those people have not read it, right? And so it's kind of funny when people are like have all kinds of opinions about it. Uh, because politically they don't like they, they don't like what I represent. I haven't read any of it. Don't understand why people would like it, but have a lot of opinions about it, right? If you actually read my life, you actually read it, you realize I'm speaking from a very, very wounded place. Um, uh, it's very subtle and very hidden, though. It's in between the jokes. And that is what made it so popular. And I can tell you that uh, with absolute assuredness, because um, after my stuff blew up, there had to have been 10,000 people who tried to copy me. And there's literally not a single one who was ever able, uh, as a man, who was a, ever able to pull it off. There's, there's been quite a few female comedy writers who've done pretty well with books, Chelsea Handler and a few others. Not one single man pulled it off, uh, like in terms of the style that I wrote. Uh, you know, there's comedians that write stuff that's funny, of course, but it's a different, that's jokey funny. Mine wasn't jokey funny. Um, and so, like, it was, it was deeply actually emotional, but just in a way that was very hard to see. Um, yeah. So, like, if you read it, you see that. You got to read a few of the stories and you're like, oh, it's all there. It's very subtle. And so, like, if you're at the level of consciousness that I was when I was writing that, then you, it, it is a way of, of feeling your emotions, honestly, which it was funny. I ne you never could have explained that to me at the time. I was not doing that consciously. It was just, I, when I sat down to write it, I had one fucking rule, tell the fucking truth. 
tell the truth about what happened, tell the truth about how I felt. That was my only rule. And that was an emergent property. All right, next question. Uh, this is another good one. I'm on the other end of the scale from wanting vengeance. I view what others did with the grace of realizing that they had their own issues, et cetera. But how do I walk through that tightrope of speaking truthfully, but wanting to explain away for the sake of others? Okay, great, great, great point. This is why we tell you over and over to write it for yourself. I, like, I, I guess I just have to repeat myself again and again and again, which is fine. That's often the way it works. If you write it for yourself, you are not worried what other people are thinking. Period. Point, point. That is how you do it. And if you cannot, I'm sure there are a lot of you probably the majority of you watching who find the thought of thinking exclusively about yourself and for yourself and your own needs as absolutely uh, seizure inducing. <laughs> it's like, you can't do it. I'll tell you what that means. If we're going to be real frank, that means you came from a very toxic uh, young environment. Maybe your parents, maybe not. I don't know. You came from a very toxic environment. Maybe it was young. Maybe it was older. I don't know. Someone has convinced you that your needs are not valid and that, that their needs or other people's needs must supersede. Them. I would go to therapy straight up. The book, I'm, a book by itself is not going to help you work through that. I would absolutely go to therapy and I would absolutely focus on how do I learn to care for myself, to love myself, to recognize my needs and then to meet those needs. And writing a memoir uh, where you only write for yourself can be an instrumental part of that process. I'm not gonna say it can't be the only part of the process, that's not true. But um, if you put all of that weight just on the book, that's really tough because it is very hard to heal emotional issues without other people. That's why therapy exists is because the way emotion, the way you address trauma is almost always in a contextual uh, interpersonal relationship. Just the way it works. I noticed in my own self too, that anytime I was writing and attempting to shield someone else, what I was really doing was shifting blame onto myself like shielding someone else i was doing it because i wanted to blame someone <laughs> i didn't want to be the bad person that just points a finger at everyone so then i heaped it all on myself and then i had all this other shit to process because mm -hmm. i was beating myself up which is oh, yeah. which is codependency you know, we, <laughs> absolutely codependency but also in a weird way it's incredibly selfish to think oh everything's my fault it is a way of controlling your emotions, of being a controlling narcissist that where there's two ways to be a controlling narcissist. You can be like like the Trump wet narcissist, right? Like that style of narcissism. Or you can be the, the more, let's call it the quieter, uh, you can be the altruistic narcissist, right? The one who's like, no, I exist to serve others. I don't care about myself. The self-sacrificing narcissist is the one who will destroy themselves to help others and then be resentful towards them, right? It is actually the opposite side of the same coin. They are, they are one and the same. The coin is the same. The sides look the opposite, but they are not. And so most people I know who are the self-sacrificing narcissist had Trumpian style narcissist parents. Uh, that's very, very often the case. And I mean that in the broadest sense, right? And so their reaction is the underlying issue is the same, but the surface is the complete opposite. If you really, uh, this stuff will come up if you write this. I mean, if you really dive into your life, this is going to come up. If that's the issue in your life, there's pl plenty of other issues that can come up. One last question on this section. How do you write through guilt that you might feel? I, I, there is not a better answer than to say you write for yourself, right? If you are writing, in fact, what you have in front of you, if you are feeling guilt about this, and I'm sure it's the majority of you, right? And that's cool. That's great that you're trying to work through 
I cannot be more clear about this. If it is very difficult for you to sit down and write through, um, if it is very difficult for you to recognize your own needs and your own desires and take care of yourself without feeling guilt, you have been conned. You have been manipulated by someone who, they may not be evil. They may be a really good person. They were just dealing with their own shit. So I'm not calling your parents evil. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I have no fucking idea. I have seen countless examples of families full of white knights, everyone trying to do the best, that were insanely toxic, right? Just, just because someone thinks they're trying to do the best does not mean that they are. Um, in, in, in actual uh, uh, in effect and so um, if, if guilt is overriding you need to go get therapy I cannot be more clear about that and if, you, if you're afraid to do therapy you just want to write your book okay cool uh, that's fine maybe you're not ready then uh, tell yourself I'm writing this only for myself this book is for me, right? And if you can't even write a rough draft for you without uh, guilt crippling and stopping you, then you have some serious emotional issues to work through. I don't mean you're crazy. You just have serious issues to work through. Ask me how I know. I've had to work through all of this. That's why I know this. why I can talk about this so clearly and directly because I've had to work through all this. And I'm still working through it because it goes in layers. This is not a linear thing. This is like an onion. It's not a race. You peel off a layer of the onion. What do you get? Another layer of onion. You peel off another. What do you get? You keep peeling layers. And then, of course, you get to the middle. It's a beautiful little flower, right? Except you're fucking crying and snotty by the time you get there because you've peeled 50 layers of the onion. Okay, that's probably what writing your memoir is going to be. That's how it works. Uh, so if you... If you're trying to deal with guilt as a symptom, how do I stop feeling guilt? You can't. Absent um, heroin <laughs> or, or some distraction, gambling, sex, whatever it is you use as a distraction, drugs, whatever you use as a distraction, you can't. But that doesn't work, not forever. It just pushes the pain away for a second. And then once you sit, sit down to write, it comes back. Right. And that's the point. The point of writing this is to speak your truth so you can be free of the pain. That's the only way to let it go. It's the only way. And it, also, it is why I highly recommend. If, if you, not ever, you don't have to go into therapy for writing a memoir. But if your guilt is so overriding and so crippling that it is preventing you from writing the truth, then you really, in order to get through that, I would highly, highly recommend pairing it with therapy. And I'm telling you this not from a place of judgment, from a place of ultimate compassion. I have had to do this. I have had to do the same thing. I've written, you know, big fancy writer, millions of books sold, blah, 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 blah. The, the memoir I'm writing now, I'm only able to do because of the various forms of therapy I've done. Psychedelic medicines, talk therapy, all kinds of other things. If I hadn't done that, I never could have written it. Never. Anything else? We're going to end on that? All right. Let's take a five-minute break because we've had a lot of intensity. <laughs> it's what I'm like intense. All right. So, Miles, can you uh, can you pop on, put the five-minute uh, break on? We need some kind of like gif of dancing people during the break or something. Yeah, right. We'll Seriously. Lighten the mood around here. I, I'm not going to dance. All right. So, we're, <laughs> we're going to take a five-minute break. And then when we come back, we're going to dive into the templates and we're going to start doing the work. Okay. All right, cool. Miles is going to put that on. I'll put on some, some Japanese lo-fi hip hop. There we go. There we go.
There we go. Is that done? Okay. Yeah, that's better. All right. Stop screen sharing. Get the hell off. There we go. All right. Any, any other questions pop up or we we settled for now? We have one more question that I don't think you plan to cover later. Feel free to push it off if you do. Um, difference between an autobiographical novel and memoir. What's the line between them? None. Effectively none. The, the, the only real difference, if you want to argue the difference, which I did, I kind of talked about this. I understand why they probably asked the question because I differentiated in the what kind of book should you write. The, the only real difference is an autobiography. An autobiography is like your whole life. And a memoir is like a section of your life. That's basically, that's that's the the technical difference. Like uh, Michelle Obama wrote an autobiography because it like covered her whole life. David Goggins, well, he didn't. Tiffany wrote a memoir because it was just a few stories from her. Life. That's it. Well, and then there are books that are like a million little pieces that are not uh, strictly truthful, right? Like a million little pieces is essentially That's a, novel. a novel. Yeah. Right. Well, okay. So th those are pretty bright line distinctions. It's a novel or it's a memoir. Like, you no, know, a lot of people will, um, and we'll cover this pretty extensively in the publishing masterclass we do. The memoir publishing masterclass, which will kind of cover a lot of these the, the technical details of these questions, but um, it is absolutely valid. And there's a lot of people who will write a memoir and then like just publish it as a novel, right? And that's it. And it's like, okay, cool. Um, there's reasons you may want to do that, reasons you may want to avoid that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, like. Uh, like that's again it's if you are at the stage where you're writing don't worry about it not right now anything else the other ones on this list are for later stages let's move They're on coming all right sweet let's keep going all right uncover your memoir 
So bring up your scribe memoir outline doc. And Miles, can you uh, post a link in the chat for people who don't have that? Um, uh, just in case. So what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, right at the top with find your memoir. Right? Uh, so first one, first question. As you sit here right this moment, what do you believe your memoir will be about? So let's take, uh, I'll play the music. Let's take two minutes. Take two minutes and answer that. Right on the dock. Oh, I gotta unmute it. all right next come on if anyone if you want to share your answer please go ahead and feel free to put it in the chat in fact yeah go ahead and, and, and make sure to put panelists in well you don't have to put panelists in attendees if you only put panelists and only emily and i can see it and miles uh who's a community manager for scribe writers room uh if you put it for everyone then then we can all see it Let's see, Chris says, therapeutic relief, freedom, belonging to humankind, healing for others. That was good. Last 10 years of my life, moving to France, opening a bike shop, starting from nothing, becoming a company that attracts global clients. That sounds kind of cool and interesting. Show what my experience has been like becoming a lawyer. Yeah, more people need to read that before going to law school. <laughs> you probably won't go. Uh, how I uncovered inner peace. That's good. My journey with MS, leading to a stem cell transplant. Huh. Growing up with parents with an addiction. Uh, and ongoing addiction issues that's rough yeah there's quite a few of those um all right cool let's look at the next one number two what are you most excited about with regards to your memoir all right and it could be any number of things you're excited about uncovering your truth you're excited about writing it you're excited about having it done you're excited about dealing with your issues whatever you want let's go ahead and take two minutes uh write that right now
All right. Come on. All right. If you want to post in the chat, feel free. Post that there. That there. Let's see, sharing all the years of hilarious stories. Yeah, cultural. Yeah. I mean, ha- having, l- l- let me make something clear. I talked about the intense emotional stuff with memoirs. You can have a lot of fun writing a memoir too. It can be really fun. God knows if I know that, if I know anything, I know that. So everything, if your memoir doesn't have a lot of deep emotional stuff in it, that's totally cool. That's just tend to be where most of the questions come from. So don't make it, I don't want anyone to feel like it has to have uh, owning my story, being able to good. And Leslie say, being able to look at my experiences collectively and find out what makes me, me. That's a great one. Yeah. Uh, possibilities of moving on with my life, Edie says. Hearing from others how my book has helped them, that'd be great. Sense of relief from having done it, seeing it on the shelves, libraries and bookstores, traveling and talking about it, looking in the eyes of those who read it and were moved by it. These are all fantastic. Really good. A bunch of good ones here. Sharing my experience as a two-time Oscar survivor. Oh, cancer. I thought they won two Oscars and like, you're an Oscar survivor. (laughs) Okay. Well, I could understand that actually being able to put a comical twist on my horrific daunting uh, experiences. I've had dating as a millennial sharing my experience at two time cancer. Yep. Here's a good one. Having the completed manuscript in my hands, ready to be proofread and translated. Laura, there you go. All right. Good answers. All of you. Number three, what do you expect from yourself in the process of writing your memoir? Go ahead and and write that down. It can be good and bad. All right. So put your answers in the chat. Personal growth. I've arrived. That's what Isabella says. Transparency and honesty. That's great, Robin. Melissa says procrastination, overthinking. That's what you expect from yourself. (laughs) Wanting to protect others' feelings, philosophical spins. Okay. That's good that you at least recognize that that might be coming. That's actually good for you for being honest. You should put uh, at least a little bit of self-awareness. Gina, uh, Jenna, what do you uh, expect to fall down, get up, dust off, and restart? Okay, that'll work. Uh, Anna, I expect to enjoy it, to do it. Completing a book's a big achievement. Yeah. Lynn says a feeling of accomplishment after doing MFA five years ago. You know, the new past, uh, beyond my past, give myself a new purpose and work. Oh, we have so many MFA people who come to these. And it always makes me laugh. I'm like, if you have paid me six figures, I would have taught you that shit way quicker. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. All right. Not really. But sorry. Number four. 
how would you feel? How would you like it to feel after you've written it? Okay. So let's take two minutes. Do that one. Let's start to look at some, post some answers. Let's start looking at how you want to feel when you're done. Accomplished, accompli like I see accomplished like six times in this row. <laughs> I like to feel certainty about my place in my own life. Great. Proud and unashamed to share. That's great, Robin. Uh, another Robin says self-acceptance, lighter, clarity of purpose, able to move forward. Uh, Melissa wants to feel heard. Leslie wants to feel like she solved the riddle. Sharissa. Wants to feel if I'm sorry, relieved, renewed, transformed, accomplished, proud, excited. Okay, I want to take a second here. As you guys are posting, it's mostly ladies, keep posting. Um, I, I want to take a second though, these are all fantastic, and I'm not putting I'm not taking anything away. Be careful how much pressure you put on your book though, right? I'm just gonna say this now you can put all this stuff down, but understand that the memoir will not do any of this, right? This is how would you like to feel after you've written it. So you've done your work to do the memoir and then that's how you're gonna feel. I'm, I'm sure most of you are that. I just wanna make sure that none of you feel like, oh, I'm gonna write a memoir and then magic and I'll feel amazing. It's like, no, this, the, the magic, the stuff in the middle is the hard part, the stuff you gotta do, the emotional work. Okay, if, as long as you get that, just being clear. All right, cool, let's move to number five. How do you think your life will change after writing your memoir? Right? So let's take two minutes and do that one.
All right. All right, let's see. Go ahead and put your answers in the chat. And this is, which one is this again? This is, all right. How do you think uh, your life will change after writing your memoir? Very little, some sense of accomplishment, maybe get a date. All right, Stephen. Uh, Melissa says, I'll feel calmer internally because the experience of expression, definitely. Freeing my mental space for other things is great. Joey says, I'll be a stronger person, be more, uh, more sure of who I am, where I'm going. That's great. Gina says, or Jenna, not much will change. We'll make it easier for other families to tell their stories. That changes a lot, Jenna. <laughs> if families start speaking truth to each other, everything changes. Um, even if it's a little change. Tracy understood my actions will make sense. Uh, I will be able to see how my then got me to where I am now. My kids will see the bit, how being raised by me influences their choices. That's a really good one. Heidi says, I'll be a more consistent writer. Uh, that's definitely true. Uh, Sharice says, I think I'll be more vulnerable and less guarded. Absolutely. Deborah says, possibly not much. Increased speaking engagements, discussion groups, masterminds. I'll be viewed differently. I'm not sure how you're going to be getting speaking and discussion groups from a memoir. It depends what the memoir is about. Um, that could happen. Krista, I'm afraid of losing the love and comfort of things the way they are. There's a lot of fear being projected here. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, writing a memoir, if you speak truth, will almost always change your life. Uh, most of the change in the long run will be better. I think in the long run, all the change is better. But um, short term, it can be very painful. That's 100%. I don't want to sugarcoat that, it, assuming you publish it. And even if you don't publish it, you sit down and write your truth. You may realize some really hard things about people in your family or people you're in relationships with now. Or there's a million things. There's a lot of hard truths you may realize that, that are unpleasant. Ivy says, maybe others who are fearful of writing will see the benefits. There you go. Catharsis, courage, that changes you yet. Yeah. Ivy, I would ask you, how does that uh, impact you too? Uh, you're talking about others, which is cool, but don't forget about yourself. All right, number six, we got 10 total questions. So we're, we're past halfway. Do you anticipate your memoir will cover your whole life, a specific period in your life, a specific relationship or theme in your life or something else? Let's just take a minute right now. Write down what, what you anticipate right now your memoir will come. And you can change. Go ahead and post. Uh, go ahead and post what um, what you're thinking. Last 13 years of my life, uh, Tracy says, cover the 14 duty stations of a 24 year naval career. <laughs> Might be a lot to cover. Uh, Jack says, I anticipate my memoir will be about a specific time when I was diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, that that makes sense. Michelle says, I'm not sure true you don't have to be sure right now at first i thought my whole life but now i'm thinking my life is so in flux obviously uh that maybe i'll pick a specific theme this way i'm not limited to one specific time and can include many parts of my life true you can do all that joey says it'll cover several areas of my life to add up to something later all right patricia patricia matt says uh, i have to start at the beginning no actually you don't you can decide to but you don't have to uh, Isabella says, I believe that writing a memoir touch on my whole life, my whole being, which took 50 years to create, that the focus will be lost in years. All right. Um, snapshots of Robin, snapshots of pivotal moments and how I saw my truth. That's pretty cool. Uh, all right. A lot of people in the military. Regis, Regis says, My married life. Yeah. Lynn says, My parents divorce to my own marriage and two children. Okay. All right. Cool. Good. I think this is a good time, Tucker, to cover one of the questions we've got in the Q&A, which is, do memoirs vary in style? 
like writing on a theme versus writing a chronology versus writing on lessons learned? Right. Uh, so it's a great question. I intentionally do not spend too much time on question six. I could spend a lot of time on chronology versus theme versus relationship versus other things. And I'll tell you why I don't. Because I believe most of you, I believe most people who sit down to write a memoir, they know what they want to say. They may not have admitted it to themselves yet. They may not even consciously realize it, but deep down they know. And the more, what I've discovered is, as I've taught, I've taught a lot of people how to write memoirs, the more prescribed I make it, like the more like, you need to check this, do this, do this, do this, the less effective it is for people. And that people definitely need boundaries and guidelines and rails to go down, which we're giving you, but um, not exact step-by-step step step checklist. Like the nonfiction program is far more prescribed. First you do this, then you do this, then you do this. You see how they relate. Like it's, it's a very prescribed because that's a different style of book. The thing I would tell you about um, question six is honestly, it's a little bit of a throwaway question. I don't care. You're going to figure that out as you write the book. The reason I'm putting it here is so you can put a flag in the ground and understand where you are now. And then as we outline, you'll probably change your mind. And then as you write, you'll change your mind. Maybe, maybe not. It kind of doesn't matter. But you're going to sort it all out as you finish the book, as you write the book. Sorry. Does that answer the question, Emily? I think so. And I want to add to, um, we've said various iterations of this leading up to this point. But the more that you focus on craft, the more that you focus on the quality of the writing, the more you try to focus on exactly what your memoir is supposed to be, the more likely you are to avoid the truth. Yeah, we go, we go through that deeply in writing, the writing section on this. Yeah. So let's, let's hold off to that for, for a minute because you're exactly right. But I want, I want to get that with writing. So let's go to number seven. If you were to title your memoir just right now, not permanently, what would the title be? Take a minute to do that. And just brainstorm, whatever. the country that does not exist anymore Ooh, that's really good yeah uh, grounded on unbecoming cassidy says healing for a second chance oh this is jack jack says having a ball how, t- how testicular cancer changed my life <laughs> oh, there, you there you go golf clap for jack and his name's jack of course too yeah there you go all right Jordan says the Bumble Diaries. Uh, oh, Stephen Webb, the gift of no choice. How ending ended up, how being severely paralyzed, bankrupt, uh, uh, helps you realize there's a gift in everything. That, yeah. <laughs> the gift of no choice is actually a very good title. From Maggie, what I want to tell you before I die. I think sometimes some of the best working titles are the ones that evoke the things that you want to write about, whether it's actually a good title or not. That one, actually, I think it's really good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Uh, Don't follow my path. That's a pretty good title. I I would question your story telling yourself. I'm not sure, but it's a good title. 
Edie, let's, God is funny. Is she writing about God in Tucson? Just kidding. Oh, yeah, right. Not funny. <laughs> that's not funny. Uh, let's science the shit out of this from Charisse. I'm not, that's a good title. I'm not sure that's a memoir. Well, maybe it could be. It depends what, what it's about. So I don't know. Flo, the dog at the end of the tunnel. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, Alex, Alexandra is Savage. I'm pretty sure there's a couple books called Savage, but that's no big deal. You can't copyright a title. So you can you can call your book the Holy Bible if you want. If you want. That's fine. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do it. Robin, not my mother's daughter. Yeah, I saw that one. That's a good mm-hmm. one. All right, let's go to, to number eight. Why write your memoir now? Why not wait? Let's take, I'll probably give you a little bit more than a minute, but... Give me the, the short, honest answer. Why are you doing it now? Why not wait? Let's see. Let's see what people are saying. If if you still need time, just keep going. It's fine. My daughter Maggie says my daughter needs it for her life. Good one, Edie. Because waiting sucks the life out of me. <laughs> Damn. You're right, Edie. I'm with you. That's great. Um, Anna says why I still remember, I'm still able to write. Also, people are waiting for my story. Love it. That's amazing. Sophia says write it now because there'll be more to come for another true i've waited long enough waited long enough there's about 20 of those um, something ivy says something inside me is compelling me to write right now maybe i have more time behind me than in front of me yeah it is a strange thing when you start to grapple with your own mortality isn't it I'm 44 and I have three kids and I don't think I ever really truly grappled with my mortality until I started having kids and realizing God willing that I'm going to outlive me. Of course, everyone knows they're going to die, of course, but actually emotionally grappling with it. And then I'm 44. So realizing I may have more life behind me than ahead of me. Like I could easily die at 85, you know? Like that's not unreasonable. And so like, even if it's, you know, we're, I'm close to halfway. I don't know. You know, I might not live to 90. Um, I'm going to try, but who knows? Jordan, I'm currently unemployed and locked in my house. Well, yeah, hopefully there won't be another time like this. I agree with you, Jordan. You're right. Although if you lived in Texas, you would not have to be in your house. Um, Heather, I finally have free time to build an audience who's expressed interest. Awesome. Joey, it's been in my soul to write for too long already. I can always write another book if I have more to tell. You do, and that's great. I'm with you. Jack, it's always something I wanted to do, and now that we're in quarantine, I have the time to do it. All right. These all look awesome. Oh, my goodness. Wait, someone just wrote, Jenna, because I'm dying. The enemy would like me, the enemy would like me to set this project aside. Well, good for you. That's awesome. We're all dying, by the way. Maybe you're just dying faster than the rest of us, but... We're all dying. Heidi, I'm about to be 37. I have baby children. I have done a lot of growing the past years and things to say. Yep. I'll tell you one of the big reasons I want to keep writing. I'll probably write memoirs the rest of my life. In you know, reasonable stages. Um, because I grow and change so much. Like the books I wrote 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Obviously, I'm like, that's me. I did those things. 
it's hard for me to even get into that mindset anymore. Like I almost can't like I, in a weird way, I almost don't even know who that person is. Like, and I don't mean that literally. I just mean it like emotionally, experientially. Um, certain stories I'm like, oh, I could still do that today. That's hilarious. And other things I'm like, who the fuck was I? <laughs> like, <laughs> I couldn't conceive of even writing about that now, much less doing it. And I don't even mean that. I don't mean it in a judgmental way. All that. Like, I don't, I don't, that's not my issue with it. It's just more like, I don't, I was such a different person. Um, and I'll bet I'll feel that way about myself. I hope I feel that way about myself in 10 or 15 years because that means I'm still growing and still evolving. Uh, and so, all right. Next, number nine, we got two left. What are you, why are you really writing your memoir? Really? Give me your real answer, honest. Put it down, two minutes. All right, let's, there's been a bunch posted. So if you're still working, keep working. It's fine. I want to start reading some of these because they're really good. Why are you really writing your memoir? Self-therapy, good. Oh, look at Elaine. Proof that I existed. Good for you. Whew. That's a that's a deep one. John, cathartic and interesting. Good. Miriam, I was here. Mm -hmm. Anna, to leave something behind when I'm not there. To create something that will remain after I'm gone. To create something unique my friends might enjoy when I'm still here. Remember me when I'm not. Good for you, Anna. Rajesh, I'm probably screwing up your name, dude. I'm sorry. My legacy, Anna, because I'm tired of being complicit through an action. Ooh, good for you. That's a ugh, love that. Flow. I'm curious to know if I can do it and who I am. You will be different. Flo. Jordan, prove to myself I can write and finish something of this magnitude. Good. J Jasic, because it's a story inside of me. I need to create it. Good. See, I like. Notice how Jasic used the word create. Not even tell. Tell implies the story already exists. I'm going to tell you a trick about stories. You get to create your own story. You don't have to. Tell means that it's an objective fact outside of you. And of course, events are facts, right? But create implies you get to dictate what your story is. And you do. It's one of the weird things about reality. You don't get to dictate like this pen is a pen. I don't get to transmogrify it into a spoon. It's not the matrix, right? But uh, you get to tell your own story the way that you want. You get to make meaning out of it. Uh, Robin, the time has come. Draw a defining land in the sand. Document how far I've come so I can move forward and uncover new lessons. Good for you. Heather, to know I can and have tan tangible evidence that I was able to do it rather than talking about it. Good for you. This is, these are inspiring. Melissa, to be understood. Now, Melissa, let me just tell you, to be understood is great, but don't expect anyone else necessarily to understand you, right? You get to be understood to yourself. That's the only thing you can control. There will be other people who understand you now, so no doubt. But uh, I'm just thinking like sometimes people are like, I want my dad to get me. Uh, and so they'll write a memoir. And I'm not saying you're doing this. I'm just, as an example. 
but if your dad doesn't understand you, a lot of times that's his problem. And there's nothing you could necessarily. A lot of times there's nothing you could write that, that um that's going to change that. He's got to. I'm not saying that necessarily about you. for everybody. Uh, e. I can see my truth on paper. Yeah, I can be a witness for my own fucking truth. Good for you. These are such good. Ones. Leslie, I wish I'd known these things as a young woman. Right? It will help you understand a lot of connections, Leslie, to your current life. Robin, to acknowledge my growth. Goddamn right. Ivy says, I want my children and grandchildren to understand who I was coming, who I was coming up. I wanted to ask my father, who died 21 years ago, questions I can't. That's one of the big things for me. Like I would give anything to have my great grandparents' stories. Um so my kids will know who I am and my great grandkids and great great grandkids for whatever it does for them. Patricia, tie up loose ends, forgive those, not sorry. Okay. Forgiveness is for you, not for them. Remember that. Stephen, I share my story most days on stage and live. It changes people's lives. They want the whole story. I want to leave my life as well. So good for you. There's so many good ones. I can't read them all. There's too many. Um proud i made it through i want to pass on my life, creating resiliency to my kids so they can pass it on good for you i'm very excited uh, i'm convinced that a lot of the problems the world has right now we would not have as more people cared about doing stuff like this but maybe i'm wrong all right last one number 10 given your answers above all of them what do you think your memoir is really about so number nine was why are you writing it 10 is what's it really about? Really. Take two minutes. Let's see. Let's see, we got some healing. Larisha says, Edie says, Tucker, what you, oh, it's, what you just said about your great-grandparents inspired me. That's not this. So why are you really writing it? Okay, uh, actually, let's go ahead and pop out. We're done with the slides. So my journey from a different culture, what's it really about? Uh, my chance at life after becoming disabled at 34 during the prime of my legal career, Cassidy says. Five years later, I may be able to, to work again because of experimental treatment that's close to a cure for MS. Huh. I did this, and Cassidy says, I did this in spite of a narcissistic mother and with constant thoughts about how my dad died at the same age as me. That's intense. That's no joke. Um, oh, Robbins. 
I am not a mistake. I am a worthy and lovable human. Whew, good for you. Good for you for owning that. That's hard. Chuck, my response as a child and adult to people of color that I admired in my youth will explore the challenges and obstacles they faced and overcame. I think about how my attitudes can be redeemed. All right, so Chuck, you're exactly wow, sure you're more, but that sounds like you're you're writing if you're writing about your reaction to other people, you can do that, absolutely. But do it as a way of exploring yourself, not the other because whatever issues you have or don't have with other people is always about you, not about them. Uh, which is one of those weird things. If you're saying, you can ask a further question about it. That's one of those weird things. It took me a while to understand. Uh, to, uh, Melissa, to not be lost in the passing of years for posterity for tangible validation. Right? Monica, healing. I want to look in the mirror and see the same girl or woman I used to know, only a much better and whole version. Okay? Just understand, Monica, again, the book doesn't heal you. The work you do writing the book does. I'm sure you know that. Just making sure. Um, Jordan, discovering how I function within my true desires for romantic relationships. That's really good. If you, you want to examine a specific area of your life and really kind of like figure out the truth, writing about a memoir about it can do the job. Um, Robin, my journey to self-love, expecting and deserving more for myself. Okay. Good. Connie, self-healing, my daughters and my future generations and my huge family. Good. Oh, I love Susan's response. How I listen to what I know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here's something I want to point out. Dorothea says this. I'm not criticizing you, Dorothea, but this is important. My memoir is to share a yes, you can do this message to others, especially women who feel constricted by worrying about what will others think of me. As long as one is not hurting themselves or another, then go for it. You're talking to yourself right now and you're justifying it by saying, I'm going to do it for others. That's okay, but it will, it will not produce a good memoir. It, now I would reframe it. Imagine this reframed from your perspective. My memoir will share my message about how I can do things after feeling constricted by worrying about what others would think about me. What I've learned is as long as I'm not hurting myself or another, then I can go for it. Right. Do you, th this is what I mean when I say um, a memoir is not about telling people what to do. You're telling people what to do is a way of the separating yourself from your own emotion and if you've gone through and done this work that's fantastic write about your work okay let me listen listen to what i'm about to tell all of you this is later on too but i'm going to cover it here no one's going to read your memoir to learn about the uh, you they read your memoir to learn about themselves but the way they learn about themselves is by you being honest about yourself does that make sense all right. Like it, it, it's one of those weird paradoxes that, like, I, mean, I got a whole shelf of memoirs on this side. I, aside from the two or three people I know, I don't really give that much of a shit about most of them. And nothing against them. I just don't know them. I don't but I love some, some like, uh, I'll give you a really good example Agassi's book, Open, Andre Agassi. Nothing against Andre. I don't care. I'm not a tennis person. I don't care about tennis. I love sports, but tennis is not a sport to me. Sports involve contact. Tennis is lawn dancing for...